I'm from Bangalore and uh, India and uh, I there are three parts to me so I'm a martial artist I'm a, I'm a, I'm into the medicine medical field and I'm also a marketer and uh, you know we are connecting today for the, the third part of course but uh, all three parts equally define me so as far as a martial artist I'm a third degree black belt training since the last 14 years uh, 14 and a half years continuing to train every weekend even now uh, as far as the medicine is concerned, so so my qualification is PhD in alternate medicine, uh, which I did after my engineering and MBA. And the third part is of course, uh, you know, the engineering followed by MBA, which led me to my corporate career. Uh, you know, working across MNCs and startups, working uh, you know with budgets running up to three-digit crore uh, revenues, and you know also with you know probably one lakh at startups, one lakh Indian rupees at startup or probably lesser. Uh, I've had the fortune of working in, you know, in uh, both the B2B and the B2C worlds uh, and uh, it's been a very, very good journey and I've also had, uh, you know, in, in all these three aspects of my life, I've had very, very good fortune of having good teachers and good mentors, uh, you know, uh, who I have to shut up and follow it and, you know, life's been interesting. Uh, so, I, I think, uh, so I've worked with Three, three organizations, yeah, four organizations. So that's from Z, which is media, to telecom, which is Idea Aditya Birla, and uh, then to Castrol, which is oil and gas, and, and of course, Aditya Birla. Uh, in between Aditya Birla and uh, Castrol, I did have a, uh, you know, a startup stint, and right now I'm consulting. So it's really been, uh, you know, uh, you know it's, it's as uh, wide, like you are rightly saying, and at the same time, it's very similar. Like they're very similar and they're very dissimilar. So it's it's actually an ox. I wouldn't say oxymoron, but it's it's a good contrast because uh, you know working like I'm saying, like working in an established organization like an MNC or even an Indian MNC, which is Aditya which is the largest uh, Indian MNC. Uh, you know where processes are in place, budgets are in place, but you know you still got things to do, and the scale is upward from a certain point. Uh, you know, but but. The, the job that you're doing is unidimensional, uh, depth-wise and unidimensional. Vis-a-vis -vis in a startup, you're practically doing everything. Uh, and, and now the third angle to it, which is my consulting, uh, uh, current consulting profile, which is a completely new ball game. Uh, and I think uh, essentially I was always, uh, you know, uh, I, I didn't want to just keep doing the same thing again and again. And that probably explains, uh, you know, uh, the, the movement, and I really don't call it jump, but the movement of various industries. Um, and as of the pandemic, in you know, specifically answering your question in terms of as of the pandemic, how are various industries affected? And of course, it, some of the industries like travel is very obviously uh, you know affected, not in a good way. But healthcare and pharma is affected in a very good way. You know, it's it's you know it is the industry and sector of the time. Uh, you know. Also, it, it depends at which period of time we are talking. Like, for instance, uh, I, I was, you know, on the panel of another discussion, and there, uh, this was about six, seven months back. At that point of time, the economy wasn't looking good, right? So, uh, you know, so from that period to now, uh, things have, you know, have totally moved upwards, um, and, and they're looking positive, which is a good thing. And uh, you know, I was just uh, speaking to the C, uh, MD of another organization, which is in the elevator business, and he actually in just a few days back and he was saying that it's looking really good and quarter three was you know good numbers and quarter two also was picking up so i think in uh, you know if i have to kind of summarize and this is something that i'm you know my own personal observations and and also things that have been discussing with my colleagues and you know my seniors where i i i i'm of the firm opinion that this pandemic for all its misery and for all its you know um, world came to a stop kind of a not so good thing the i think the flip side of it is that as as corporates or as business people or as just human beings i think we took us you know a minute to stop and ponder and rework at things and and i think the very fact that you're sitting in singapore and i'm sitting here and we're talking itself is a good outcome of this pandemic which is probably this wouldn't have happened otherwise uh, or, or it would have happened but it wouldn't have happened so fast uh, you know so so everything's taken a leap forward and in a good direction uh, you know also in the business world remote working has become so much more easier so much more acceptable uh, you know uh, work from home has become 
you know, not a distant possibility. It's not being looked down upon. It's a good thing right now. In terms of women coming back into the work, pro, uh, you know, the work field, people who've taken a sabbatical, it's you know, it's looking good, even better now because now women can continue to be at home and also work and come back and have a career. So you know, it's just like I think we leapt 20 years ahead, and in a good way. You know, the the leap was good. So. I look at this pandemic as a good thing with, of course, the, you know, personal losses and medical losses and you know, loss of lives, keeping that and giving it its due place. But I think uh, because we took a pause, I think as, as a business and as a human race, I think we grew. I don't look at it as a 16 and a half year old journey. While I know you're asking about my career, but I think you're also asking about uh, what are my learnings, uh, which obviously some of which I will, as probably all of which I will put in my career too, right? So I look at it as a 40 year old journey. That's how old I am. So, you know, so I would look at it like that. So I think the first thing, and I don't know if this is, you know, if, if this is something that, you know, uh, will work for others, but it's definitely worked for me. So one is I, I think I, I never wanted to get defined by, uh, you know, the regular standards uh, you know, somebody's daughter, somebody's wife, somebody's mom. I think that was, I think as a kid also, I remember, you know, not wanting to just get defined by these labels. Uh, and I think that uh, refusal to get accepted by those standard labels, you know, that, you know, society kind of lays out is, is what uh, made me who I am today, number one. Number two, I think, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, 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 the constant thing that, you know, oh, you can either be an engineer or you can be a doctor or you can only be this, you can't be that. Oh, you started your career with sales or oh, now you can't get into marketing. Oh, you started your, uh, you know, your career with the uh, media. So now you can't get into any other industry or, okay, uh, at 40, you're still doing martial arts. Why would you want to do martial arts, you know? So who are you going to beat up? So I think these questions actually spurned me on because I was like, yeah, uh, yeah, let's question these things. And, you know, Let's go, let's go and see if we can kind of uh, conquer them, right? Uh, I think so that's the second thing you don't just, so one is of course don't be, uh, you know, don't don't limit yourself to kind of, you know, just, uh, you know, go and fill those boxes that society lays out for you. Make your own boxes, number one. Number two, uh, and, and I would say don't even make your own boxes, just make your space, I would say. That's one. Second is uh, don't be satisfied. I mean, you know, okay, I got a job, I've got the good business school and I've, I've you know achieved this amount of money that I needed to make don't be satisfied I think the moment you're satisfied you become complacent and complacency is, is the beginning of mediocrity so uh, so let's not you know get complacent with you know what we have and the third thing and the most important thing I think which has constantly defined my life which I think when I have to kind of uh, if I have to write uh, you know my epitaph or whatever it is that be courageous and and I don't say this lightly. I say this with a lot of instances in my life where uh, I had the easy choice of not being courageous, you know. So long before uh, Me Too has become a big thing, long, long before I had a scenario where, you know, in the corporate world where I, I was just a manager and I had, you know, the senior most uh, member in the, in the, in the company, uh, you know, sending out messages and probably, you know, amounting to a sexual harassment. And the easy easy way out was to keep quiet. The easy way out was to just leave the organization, find a better organi uh, you know, better job, find a job away from the gentleman, you know. But I think, uh, you know, at that point of time, uh, me and of course my, you know, my teacher, you know, and, and of course people who stood by me said, no, you you want to stand up and fight this, you stand up and fight this. So that's, that's just one of the many, uh, uh, you know, incidents that I can tell you about. That's what defines you, like all of us are engineers and MBAs and all of us are doctors and all of us are corporates. I mean, there's dime a dozen by that, but in every gully and nooker that you go to. But I think what, what separates you is, is, is your character. Um, and, and that could be any, like you could, you, you could choose to be uh, dedicated about your work. You could be courageous about uh, who you are as a person and, you know, courageous in work, courageous in personal life and whatever it is that you, you know, you choose to be. But I think, you know, one defining character, if somebody says, who is Dr. Anvata? Then they'll be like, okay, she's a courageous person. She'll stand up for what's wrong or she'll stand up for, you know, her, her team. If, if she has her team, uh, her team is rest assured that, you know, she's going to fight to the nail and no harm's going to come to them. So, you know, so that's the kind of person. So build uh, who you are, build your, I think internal fiber is much more important than, uh, 
you know being very good at ppts and excel uh, you know excel sheets you will get there i mean you will obviously get there you'll obviously get good at your job there's no like you keep doing the same thing again and again you're not not going to get good you are definitely going to get and you know kash is like your journey the moment you shift organizations the moment you learn different cultures you learn different businesses you're obviously going to uh, you know be good at what you do but i think internal fiber is something that you know the core of who you are is is something that you need to consciously develop and uh, you know the definition of what is successful or uh, when is it that i've reached that you know that brink of success is 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 like is so defined it's so uh, cliche that you know i, I think my advice Uh, if if it, if it counts for anything would be like you know have your own uh, definition and and suc- success is not only you know that designation that you become a ceo or it's not that amount of money but it's also okay i could be a ceo but if i have like if i'm so unfit and i have such a big belly and you know i can't even walk five staircases then that's mm-hmm. really not successful right so success in all aspects of life be it health be it family be it peace of mind and one of that pillar is career you know which also the moment you retire it's over the moment you leave uh, your organization they forget about you your replacement so i think uh, you know your definition of success and that could just be as simple as uh, you know uh, you know I- i'm making good breakfast and i'm really good at making breakfast that itself is also a definition of success in fact uh, you know a lot of my friends uh, and especially the female friends they like how do you manage to how did you manage to get three degrees how did you man- how do you still manage to you know be a martial artist and that so i'm like so my point is not that i'm any greater achiever than somebody else because you know uh, the fact that you 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 know looked after your babies you gave birth to them at the same t- it was at that time when i managed to go and uh, you know uh, probably uh, you know pick up one more degree or you know pick up a new skill set so you're equally uh, you know you as a homemaker are equally successful as i am it's it's only about what my direction was and where i went you know and and like they always say you know your thought process and your uh, operation should not be in conflict like you know like if i wanted to be a mountaineer then i shouldn't go and do scuba diving you know that i think is the only uh, thing that one needs to be uh, cognizant of